Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. I really do appreciate it. My name is Shane Walls and I make my living as a fine art nature photographer who truly depends on his tool watches and are an intricate part of my photography process. This week's video is gonna be a short one as I wasn't planning on doing this video, but when I released my new fine art print, Echoes of the Desert, I showed this picture on my social media and I got so many comments and questions. Oh, how did the Submariner handle being out in the desert and everything like that? So let's jump into it. A quick update on my adventures and my Rolex Submariner date. So I was recently out in Canyonlands National Park. It's a beautiful place, very remote, beautiful this time of year, but the temperatures, it's a desert. So wintertime, the temperatures were hovering right around five or six degrees at night. And I was camping in those conditions for two weeks straight. Now, I know this kind of sounds, oh, this is easy peasy for the Rolex Submariner to handle this kind of stress, but it's really not. Take it into consideration. I mean, how many of you have actually slept? Not in a, we're not going to hotel rooms. We're not Bear Grylls here. We're actually out in the wilderness for two weeks straight in really sub-zero temperatures. That puts a lot of strain on a watch. To actually put it more into context, Similar situation, this is how I broke my G-Shock. The constant freezing temperatures made the plastic brittle and my menu button broke off and it was on some weird menu setting so I couldn't even get back to tell time. So that, that was a little frustrating. So it just shows you the strain, this kind of weather, not ever being inside, constantly being, I mean, I think the warmest it got was about 23 or 24 degrees during the day. That's a lot for a watch to handle. And this is how it held up. Now, usually this is the type of situation I wear my Rolex Explorer to, but it's proven itself time and time again in these kind of conditions, environment. So I thought this is gonna be the first time I can wear my Rolex Submariner date out here. Let's give it a try, as well as I was gonna do a lot of hiking and I wanted to use the rotating bezel to time my hikes. But real quickly, before we jump into that, back to why I was out in Canyonlands. With those freezing temperatures I spoke of earlier, you get this out in the desert like this, you get this beautiful haze in the morning when the sun lifts just above the mountains or just above the horizon. It lights this haze because it's so cold it warms the valley floor of the desert. You get this beautiful haze usually. I mean, I went there five times in the last day, luckily enough, we got it. But my shot here, Echoes of the Desert, Mesa Arch, looking through the arch. Oh, I just I love this shot. Beautiful, just epic, tremendous desert sunrise. So that's why I was there. And again, back to the picture I posted on social media, everyone was asking about the Submariner because I used this watch to time my exposure, which was intricate in getting this shot. Mind you, you can't trust your cell phone in these kind of situations. One, it was so cold, the battery will just die on you. Two, we were nowhere near having service because I had to go there days before at a time exactly when the sun peaked over the horizon because I need to start my exposure before the sun actually came up over the horizon to light the scene. And because even if my timing is off by a few seconds, the sun will get too high above the horizon during my exposure and just blow out the whole scene. So timing is critical as you only have one attempt per day to capture this image. And you just have to hope the whole environment and atmospheric conditions come together and they did for this perfect epic shot. This sounds so easy for a watch to do this kind of stuff, but in this environment, again, it's extremely tough. These cold, cold situations and never having a break from it to keep the oils and everything in the watch running smooth to keep accurate time. The Submariner over these 14 days of freezing temperatures kept day accurate. And like I've mentioned in my other videos, after wearing this for a month, the date was the, excuse me, the Rolex Submariner date was only four seconds fast after wearing it for a month. So this watch has proved extremely accurate, both in normal, <laughs> quote unquote, normal conditions, as well as freezing cold conditions, which I was in for this adventure. When I first got the Submariner, I was gonna keep it away from situations like this because I was a little worried about drying out the gaskets or the rubber sealing in this watch because this is, it's a dive watch. It's meant to be underwater. It's, it seemed to handle these conditions well, but I, I didn't want to push it. But I've realized now after this, 
It held up just fine and I actually went surfing with this watch yesterday. <laughs> Didn't even think twice about it, which I guess is a good thing. Out of sight, out of mind, just it's built so tough. Went surfing with it, no issue. So even with those freezing cold temperatures back down here in Southern California, we're in the 70s here and going swimming, the cold temperatures did not damage the rubber gaskets. Now this is short term over long term. I'm not 100% sure. I think I will get this watch because we're going out to the Grand Canyon here soon. I think I'll get this watch checked this springtime just to make sure the gaskets are everything good before I go scuba diving again. As for the appearance of the watch, nothing. I mean, it got some new dings and scratches on it. That's to be expected. Ceramic bezel held up great. The sapphire, no scratches. It got dinged pretty good. I hit it up against a few rocks and everything. The bracelet took on a few scratches, which totally fine. I think it adds character to the watch. But as for, yeah, the scratch resistant, sapphire and scratch, re excuse me, scratch re resistance, there it is, bezel held up completely fine. And again, knocked it a few times, no issues at all. Still a great sounding bezel. Yeah, no issues with that. And it did take a pretty good beating. As mentioned in earlier videos, the quick glide or quick lock system, whatever Rolex calls it, it's extremely useful in conditions like this, like putting it and making it bigger to put on over a wetsuit works just as well to make it bigger quickly and easily with no tools to put it over a jacket, sub-zero temperatures. I don't always want to be lifting up my jacket, let all the warm air out on my wrist. So just great system. I'm really kind of wishing my Explorer 2 had that because it became, it was very, very useful under these conditions. The very comfortable bracelet. I'm still so impressed that I'm able to wear this 14 days straight without taking it off. But on that note too, the extra heat from my wrist I'm sure it kind of helped the watch keep, well, what I assumed better time because it was a little bit warm. It wasn't out in the elements. I wanted to test that. So the last day, I think it got down to eight at night. I took the watch off and just left it by itself in the freezing cold. The time, the accuracy was not affected. So that just, again, goes to show you how tough these watches are. Even without the heat from my wrist and very, very cold temperatures, and it sat there, it was at least, God, it was, must have been 10 hours because I didn't do sunrise on that last day because the snow was coming. You can see here packing up the tent and starting to snow. Um, so even without the heat of my wrist, the time, the accuracy did not waver. Oh, also something I should mention that was very, very impressive to me. My Rolex Explorer 2 I had with me as well. And I was just whining. I wasn't wearing it. I was meant to do another video with it, but I didn't have time. But so for those two weeks, I never wore the watch. I just kind of wound it every day for when I was going to use it. Never had time to. It still kept extremely accurate time as well with being 14 days, 15 days, actually never on the wrist, just being wound. It was still about a quarter to a half second fast a day in those freezing temperatures, never on my wrist. That is also very, very, I mean, that just speaks to the robustness of these watches that they can keep that kind of time in those kind of temperatures. Looking back at it, there's not much I can fault. I mean, there's nothing really. The only thing actually I can fault, and I actually know I can't really fault because it's designed to be a dive watch, not designed to go hiking out in the desert, but these serrated, the serrated bezel cut on my jacket, but that's really the only, and that's not even an issue really. It's, you know, picking at straws here. That's really about it. Other than that, I can't, even go in to say how impressed I was. And I've done this excursion with a lot of watches, believe me, my Breitling, my Panerai, even my Omega. They didn't hold up as well because I, I, it's really hard to really show how tough of conditions these really are. It's not so much as, you know, 99% of people They'll go into these conditions, but they'll only be in them for a couple hours, you know, maybe 10, 11 hours, and then they're back at a hotel, they're back somewhere warm. They're even back in a restaurant or something like that. I just want to say I was out in the elements the whole time, and that means the watch was out in the elements the whole time. There's breaks, you know, sitting in the car and stuff like that, but that is extreme, maybe not extreme, extreme, but it is 
it is very, it's very, very, very harsh environment for a watch. And like the Omega, the Panerai, the Breitling didn't really hold up to it. The Rolex Explorer 2 has been through this for years and it's doing amazing, no issues. I don't see why this won't be any different, but again, not to harp on the older ones, but they only lasted, a, they lasted less time than this one did. Given there were minor problems, but they were problems. The Rolex Submariner date, no issues, kind of thrown to the wolves in a way, 14 days and sub-zero temperatures. It held up great. So thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you want more information on the art piece, we're only doing 18 prints of those. There's a link down below for more information on our website, as well as we'll be doing, I think, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, we're out in the Grand Canyon. We're back out in Zion this winter coming up. We're gonna do a road trip, a month road trip, photographing all these great national parks and both the Submariner and the Explorer 2 will be with me. So stay tuned for more travel updates, fun adventure stuff on that. Thank you again. Cheers.